Shall our coffers then be emptied to redeem a traitor home? My leave. No, on the barren mountain let him starve. For I shall never hold that man my friend whose tongue shall ask me for one penny cost to ransom home revolted Mortimer. Revolted Mortimer? He never did fall off my sovereign liege, but by the chance of war. My blood hath been too cold and temperate, unapt to stir at these indignities, and you have found me. For accordingly you tread upon my patience. Our house, my sovereign liege, little deserves the scourge of greatness to be used on it. And that same greatness, too, which our own hands have helped to make so portly. Must I get thee gone? For I do see danger and disobedience in thine eyes. My lord. Henceforth, let me not hear you speak of Mortimer. Or you shall hear in such a kind from me as will displease you. My good lord, hear me. My lord Northumberland, we license your departure. With your son. Farewell, kinsman. I'll talk to you when you are better tempered to attend. Why, look you! I am whipped and scourged with rods, nettles, and stung with bismires when I hear of this vile politician, Bolingbroke. In winter's time, what do you call the place when I first bowed my knee under this king of smiles, this Bolingbroke? Splod when you and he came back from Ravensburg. At Barclay Castle. Ah, you say true. Why, what a candy deal of courtesy this fawning greyhound then did proffer me. Look, gentle Harry Percy. And kind cousin. Ah, the devil takes such cousins. God forgive me. Give me a copper sack to make the eyes look red. That it may be thought I have wept, for I must speak in a passion. <laughs> Harry, I do not only marvel where thou spent'st thy time, but also how thou art accompanied. <laughs> he doth it just like one of these harlotry players as ever I see. <laughs> peace, good pint pot, peace, good tickle brain. That thou art, my son, I have partly thy mother's word, partly mine own opinion, but chiefly a villainous trick of thine eye and a foolish hanging of thy nether lip. Dost thou speak like a king? Do thou stand for me? <laughs> I'll play my father. Oppose me? <laughs> here I am set, and here I stand. Now, Harry, whence come my you? My lord of the East ah. Chief. The complaints I hear of thee are grievous. Blood, my lord, they're false. They are tickle you for young prince. There is a devil haunts thee in the likeness of an old fat man. A ton of man is thy companion. Why dost thou converse with that trunk of humours, that bolting hutch of beastliness, that swollen parcel of dropsies, that huge bombard of sack, that stuffed cloak bag, that roasted manning tree ox, that reverent vice, that grey iniquity, that father ruffian, that vanity in years? Wherein is he good? But to taste sack and drink it. Wherein neat and cleanly, but to carve a capon and eat it. We're in cunning, but in craft. We're in crafty, but in villainy. We're in villainous, but in all things. We're in worthy, but in nothing. Bosun. 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 Bosun! 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 If thou more murmurst, I will rend an oak, pig thee in his knotty entrails, till thou hast howled away twelve winters. Pardon, master. I will be correspondent to command and do my spriting gently. Do so, and in two days I will discharge thee. If by your art 
My dearest father, you have put the wild waters in this roar and lay them. The sky, it seems, would pour down stinking pitch, but that the sea, mounting to the welkin's cheek, dashes the fire out. Oh, I have suffered with those that I saw suffer. A brave vessel, who had no doubt some noble creature in her, dashed all to pieces. and fertile. Cursed be I that did so. All the charms of cigarettes, toads, beetles, bats, light on you, for I am all the subjects that you have. <laughs> what would I do? In the Commonwealth, the Commonwealth? I would, by contraries, execute, would, all, by things. Contraries, execute all things. For no kind of traffic would I admit. No name of magistrate. For no Letters of should not be known. No name of magistrate. Riches, poverty, and use of service, none. Poverty. Contracts, none. succession, born bounds of land, tilth, vineyard, none. No use of metal, corn, or wine, or oil. No occupation. All men idle, all, and women too, but innocent and pure. Please you, draw near. Now my charms are all o'erthrown, and what strength I have is mine own, which is most faint. Now it is true, I must be here confined by you, or sent to Naples. Let me not, since I have my dukedom got, and pardon the deceiver, dwell in this bare island by your spell. But release me from my bands with the help of your good hands. Gentle breath of yours, my sails must fill, or else my project fails which was to please. Now I want spirits to enforce, art to enchant, and my ending is despair, unless I be relieved by prayer, which pierces so that it assaults mercy itself and frees all faults. As you from crimes would pardon be, let your indulgence set me free. What is that, uh, that thing that gets between us and Shakespeare, that, that, that makes the, some of our best actors sort of just stop when it comes to Shakespeare? Perhaps they don't go to picture galleries and read books as much as we do. Because I think it's the fact of how everybody looked and behaved that one got a sort of Elizabethan feeling of period. I love the silence. I love the silence. After silence, what else is there? What's the, what's the line? The rest is silence. The silence is... Whatever I'm saying, I know Shakespeare said it. Mm -hmm. 